We're going to start now by talking about how to constrain things. A symbol, if you look at a symbol, this has automatic assembly, mate flush, mate two faces, or mate flush. This is mate opposing, this is mate facing the same direction, two faces. Angle directed is used a lot for orientation only. So if two planes cannot be right on top of each other, but they need to be oriented together all the time, uh, angle direction is really nice. Tangent outside, tangent inside. It's going to fix the round surface to another round surface or to a flat surface. Insert opposed um, means that this does two things. Insert mates the two adjacent faces to the circular features that you're going to select and this uses them as a mate and this uses them as a flush where they're facing the same way the other thing that insert does is it aligns the center axis that it finds from the circular object so I don't use this very much I like to go to constrain and select exactly what I want to do so it's essentially the same thing we're going to start with making these two planes line up and what happens is those two planes if you don't have those two planes showing what you can do is you can dive down into the part and remember our origin planes that we project whenever we start our sketches if you sketch this part so that it were symmetrical back and forth this way across this plane on this on this sketching plane then you would have a plane right in the middle likewise if you protrude or extrude your geometry both ways and make it symmetrical about this datum plane you'll have a datum plane right in the middle for both of these parts this doesn't always happen but if you can think ahead to how you're going to want these perfectly aligned with the same gap on every side it works out really well now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to constrain this plane to this plane and notice I can also constrain over here so I'm going to show you that next and these two went in made it opposing faces and if you hit apply right here you can actually um, go on and make one more constraint so if I go to the front view here I'm going to constrain um, let's see we were supposed to have 10,000 space on the bottom side of this surface to this surface in my class so what I would do is I would mate and you have an offset. Now this button right here allows Inventor to predict the offset and orientation. So what it's going to do is it's going to leave it right there and say that the offset is whatever distance that is. This is, uh, Inventor isn't the best at predicting orientation and offset. So I leave this alone. Also this one, it makes you pick the part first and then the surface of the part. When you have multiple parts, like let's say 300 parts in an assembly, this is very handy, but for, for this, simple assemblies that we have right now it's not necessary so I'm gonna say I'm gonna make not only can we make planes but we can just make the faces so I can make the face of this to this surface as well and if I go to the front view notice they're at they're mated absolutely mated the thing that I could do here is I could say you see the direction that this arrow is pointing right here it's pointing down so this will be a negative number negative 0.01 and it did go the wrong way so what I have right here is I have this number so if I click on this it will let me put in a different a different number for that so now I have some space all the way around my part The other thing that I could have done was made it the or made it flush the bottom of these two parts. So if I wanted to delete a constraint, I can select on it and right click and delete. Now I can move this part up and down again. I come over here and look at it. This part is grounded, but I can move this part up and down. I can't move it in and out because I've aligned these two datum planes, which cannot move normal to that. Can't be normal move normal or side to side to this datum plane because I have them fixed together. So if I go down to the underside of this, I can constrain and let's look at what flush would look like. I want to make this one and this one 
but I want them to be flush. That means that they are lined up, they're facing the same way, they're not opposing faces. So if I hit apply on this one, and I look back at the front datum plane, I see that I have all my space allotment is perfect. So now if I go over here, and I try and move this part, grab this, it, to, it gives me that no you're not going to move me symbol because it's completely constrained. We're talking about the six degrees of freedom. That's three three ways to move the X, Y, and Z planes, three ways to rotate the X, Y, and Z axes. We're going to create an assembly today and we're going to talk about the different constraints. So I'm going to go to a new type of file and if it, an assembly file has part files individually placed inside it. It could have multiple parts of the same type. We're going to go to a standard IAM. It's loading everything for me down here. And then we're going to look for parts that we've already created individually and then insert them into this assembly. The trick with assemblies is how to constrain parts. So if you need for them to move together, you need to think about that. I'm going to select place, and you can place from Content Center, which has tons of hardware, or you can place from your own directories. So right here, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to place, let's see, a vclamp base. And notice that I can if I keep clicking, I can place more than one. And notice also that it has the surname or the the original name of the part and how many, what instance of that part is in the assembly. When you hit escape, it'll stop assembling these parts in. So I can either select over here with shift, hold down shift, just like you would in any kind of um, browser and delete those out. Notice that the first part has a thumbtack by it. So if I click on that part and I right click, it tells me everything that I can do with that part. I can component replace that part with another part. It's visible. It's grounded. What it means to be grounded is that all three of its origin planes are mated with all three of the origin planes of the assembly. Notice that the assembly also has origins. Uh, it's enabled. If I disable it, I'd call it, it goes transparent so that I can reach through it and do things to other parts. Notice that the disabled parts have a green folder and whenever I enable it, it goes back to yellow and I can select on it. Now when I go to place the next part and I set it down, it's not grounded. So what I can, I can just drag this part all the way around. That's the same thing that Move does. Move lets you drag any part around except for those that are grounded. Now if I select on this and I try and drag it, it gives me that ground earth symbol or earth ground symbol and that it's, it's got a thumbtack on it, which means that it's grounded or pinned. Now the other thing that you can do is you can rotate parts to get them in the correct uh, orientation before you start to assemble them. So if I hit rotate and I select this part, I can rotate it all around, get it in the correct orientation that I want, click out into space and it stays that way. 